Hello, my name is Alison Giffo and I'm representing Girl Scouts of America. If a natural disaster were to occur, are you prepared? This video will help you better prepare for a natural disaster. The objectives of this video include the importance of preparing. Preparing helps you feel more comfortable if a natural disaster were to occur, and it provides an organized system to help you better prepare for a natural disaster. The steps to develop a plan are one, gather information, two, develop a plan and assemble an emergency supply kit, three, maintain your plan and emergency supply kit. First, you want to determine what natural disasters occur in your area the most frequently, such as in our area, floods, tornadoes, and earthquakes are the most prevalent. Then you want to find out what you need to do for each natural disaster. CDC, the Center of Disease Control, you may know them more for discovering viruses and other diseases, but they also do a lot with emergency preparedness on their website, has a great resource for this that will tell you what you'll need to do for, to prepare for each type of natural disaster. You also want to determine what plans are already in place at places you spend most of your time, such as either work or school. Each county also has an EOP, which is an emergency operation plan that explains the procedures in place if a natural disaster were to strike a community. You also want to know the signs and notifications for your area, such as text messages you can sign up for, TV on broadcasts and radio broadcasts, and you also want to know what sirens are in place that will alert you if a natural disaster were to occur. Step two is to create a plan and assemble an emergency supply kit. First, you need to determine what your needs are. In the Red Cross, in their booklet on emergency preparedness for people with disabilities has a great resource that will help you better do this. It's like a three-page personal assessment you can take, and I recommend everyone takes this personal assessment to make sure that they have all the neat resources and are aware of what they will need if a natural disaster were to occur. You also want to have an emergency contact sheet that has your name, address, phone number, and the contact information for all of your doctors as well as the contact information for your pharmacy. You also want to have at least one emergency contact out of state and I recommend you have a minimum of two to three emergency contacts. You also want to have all of your medical conditions and allergies you may have and update this regularly. You also want to have your medication list that includes the dosage, frequency, and who prescribed your medication. And if you can have a copy of your prescriptions, that's even better. And also medical supplies. You want to have um, contact information for the medical company of any medical supplies you have and also the serial number of the medical equipment. Now, I will be discussing the components of an emergency supply kit. First, you want a container that is plastic or waterproof. Waterproof is the most important thing because you want something that the water is not going to get into and then get all your supplies wet. You're also going to want to have one gallon of water per day per person. Then they recommend you have different amounts in smaller sizes, not just gallon containers, so that you're able to carry some with you if you have to evacuate. You're also going to want to have non-perishable food, such as crackers, granola bars, and dried fruit. And they recommend enough for three to four days. You're also going to want to have something that helps you cope, such I like to read. You're also going to want to have pen or paper. Pen or paper is important in case there are certain things you need to write down, such as numbers or contact information. You're also going to want to have hygiene items that you would use in your daily and they recommend you have enough for a week or so. You're also going to want to have 
your flashlight and glow stick very accessible and if you have batteries you're going to want to have that in a plastic bag so that they do not get wet and it's really important to have either a flashlight and a glow stick or at least two flashlights you're going to also want to have a whistle to signal if people are here to evacuate you but they may not see you it's a way to signal so that you can get their attention you're also going to want to have a first aid kit that includes basic first aid supplies such as band-aids, alcohol swabs, and non-latex gloves, and over-the-counter medication. You're also going to want to have a book that tells you how to do for basic first aid and might give you other resources. You're also going to want to have all of your papers and a Ziploc bag that you can close. And in this bag, you're going to want to have your copy of your identification, copy of your insurance card, your medication list, emergency contact sheet, information on your medical supplies, which includes the serial number of the medical device and contact information for the company. And you're also gonna to want to have any information that pertains to certain medical conditions that you may have that you may need. You also, if you have any chargers for medical equipment, will want to put them in a bag like this in your cell phone charger if you have a cell phone. They recommend you have at least one week of medication in your emergency supply kit and if your medication needs to be refrigerated or there's other needs with your medication, it's best to consult with your doctor to determine a plan. You're also going to want to have any other things that you've identified in your personal assessment or anything else you use on a daily basis that would help you in a natural disaster. It's also important to think of things that will help you cope because during a natural disaster, you're going to have more stress and not be as calm as you normally are and having things to help you cope is also very important. Step three is to maintain your plan and emergency supply kit. You want to make sure you check your emergency supply kit every six months or so to make sure that all of your supplies are up to date and that you don't have any expired food or batteries. You also want to update your contact information every time that changes and your medication list every time you have a new prescription. which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency that is responsible for the National Framework for Emergency Preparedness. FEMA only becomes involved when the president declares a state of natural disaster. The Emergency Operations Center, ELC, is responsible for the emergency management at the community or county level. And this has to do with what plan is in place for that particular community. The state also a lot of times becomes involved, especially when more resources are needed. Every individual can take important steps to prepare for emergencies and put plans in place in case of a disaster in your community. If you have a disability or other access or functional need, you may have to take additional steps to protect yourself and your family. People with disabilities and uh, people who have access and functional needs have to take a very proactive uh, position in their personal preparedness. If you think about it, we do it every day. We're ready for the next little disaster that we will face every day. I always say prepare as if no one's coming to rescue you um, because the reality is in a moderate or large event, no one is coming to rescue you anytime soon. It may be a very short period of time. It may be a more extended period of time, but you need to prepare as if you're not going to have any of the resources that you might typically depend on. The best way people can start to plan is by looking at the individual parts of their daily lives and figuring out where the potential gaps are. 
do an inventory of yourself, do an inventory of the things that you use on a daily basis um, to be living independently, and then think about what is essential. Think about the strategies, services, devices, tools, and techniques you use to live with a disability on a daily basis. These may include medications, durable medical equipment, service animals, assistive technology, communication tools, and transportation. You really have to be focused as to what are your needs if you end up going to a shelter for four or five days, or if you're stuck and sheltering in place because people you just can't get to you. What are the essential things that you're going to need um, to be able to survive? As you think about assembling a support team, you need to be thinking about who are the people in your workplace, who are the people in your neighborhood, who are the people in your community, who might be able to assist you. Go over your emergency plan with everyone in your support network. Make sure that someone in your personal support network has an extra key to your home and knows where you keep your emergency supplies. And teach them how to use any life-saving equipment or administer medicine in case of an emergency. It's important that you find out in those places where you receive services on a regular basis, you find out what their emergency plans are. Ask them. Uh, if you are a person who gets dialysis, what are their emergency plans? If you're a person who uses paratransit system, uh, paratransit services, what, what, are, what are their emergency plans for providing paratransit? A standard emergency kit includes water, food, and medicine to sustain all members of your household for at least three days. Visit ready.gov for a complete list of suggested items, along with recommendations for how to prepare a family emergency plan. Everybody needs to have a kit, and a kit really needs to have some very basic things in it, some water, some food. But then you're gonna wanna customize that kit to make sure that it has the things that you need. Individuals with access and functional needs may want to consider some of the following items. Extra glasses or hearing aids, battery chargers or extra batteries, copies of medical prescriptions, supplies for service animals, and necessary medical supplies. Visit ready.gov for a complete list of suggested emergency items for people with access and functional needs. People with disabilities and access and functional needs are their own emergency managers. They know what they need on an everyday basis. And what my kit looks like is very different than somebody else just kept. You want to be thinking about what is it going to take for you both in your home and out of your home to be able to maintain your health, your safety, your independence for a period of, you know, a few hours to perhaps a few days. Preparedness is actually a 365 day a year activity that all of us should take very seriously. It's important that every day we do a little something to keep ourselves as prepared as we possibly can. The most empowering thing you can do is take charge for yourself. During disaster, during the little storms and the big storms. And that's probably the most positive thing you can ever do for yourself as a person. Because that gives you control. That gives you control over the outcomes. Download this brochure about preparing for disaster for people with disabilities and other access and functional needs from ready.gov. Check out the other information available on the site and get started preparing today. Self-advocacy is the most important aspect of preparing for a natural disaster because this makes sure that all your needs are met. You have to be able to advocate for yourself. First, you have to determine what your needs are. Red Cross has a personal assessment in their book for people with emergency preparedness on disabilities, and this personal assessment is really important to help you better determine what your needs are. You can also use your support network to help you with finding resources and identifying your, your needs. Your support network can include your family, friends, churches, doctors, pharmacy, neighbors, and other nonprofit organizations. STAIRS, S-T-E-A-R-S, is the voluntary registry that you can sign up to to receive resources that you may need, such as if you're on oxygen 
or need a ventilator or other things. And you can do this two ways, either by registering online at stirs.dps.gov or by calling 211 and selecting option four. Even with registering for the voluntary registry, it's important to have alternative plans to make sure your needs are met because sometimes resources may not be given to you at a time, especially if the power is out and there's other infrastructure issues. The steps for emergency preparedness are one, gather information, two, develop a plan and assemble an emergency supply kit, and three, maintain your plan and emergency supply kit. Step three is most important because it helps make sure you're fully prepared if a natural disaster were to occur. Self-advocacy is also very important because it makes sure that your resources will be there and will help make sure that your resources will be there. Nothing can be guaranteed in a natural disaster because there's a lot of other issues, but it's and the most important thing is to advocate for yourself. I hope this video helps you better prepare for a natural disaster. Thank you for your time.